In this episode, I have a Sony camcorder. This is a DCR TRV 530. This is a digital 8 camera with 8mm and high 8 playback capabilities. One of the more sought after cameras. This one's got a few problems. Let's check it out. Today, I have a Sony digital 8 camcorder to work on. The complaint on this one is the AV jack is not working properly. It's apparently noisy and the power switch isn't working properly. So I've got the the AV jack, the AV output here. We'll check the AV cable and of course the power switch. So let's plug it in. Plug in the AV cord and I just want to see whether first of all I get a picture from the camera on the monitor. So this is what I'm getting on the screen. This is with the original cable. I'm wondering whether the cable itself is no good. So I'm just going to say I'm going to try a different cable. See whether there's a problem with the cable or there's a, a more serious problem with the camera. So I'm going to plug in my adapter cable and we'll see whether my adapter cable does the same thing. Oh, my adapter cable works. I'm wiggling the connector now and it's solid. So, um, we got a bad adapter cable. I'll go back to the other cable. Red, yellow, white, unplug mine, plug this one in, and we have a problem, Houston. Bad cable. Let's see what's wrong with the cable. Now, I've been over this before that Sony used a proprietary wiring scheme for their cables that was not normally used on other devices. They may have been, but Sony used their own. And if you bought an aftermarket one, chances are it's not going to work. And the reason for why is the way that Sony wires theirs up. If we look at Sony, the ground on it is not the furthest contact back, it's actually this one, right? The yellow is the second one over, right? And the white is the tip, I believe. White is tip. Not making any contact in there, but white should be tip. And red should be the furthest one back. Red should be this one. And then white is the tip. There we go. White is tip. So, with Sony, their proprietary cable, I will draw it out for those of you following along at home. The way all Sony stereo AV cords were wired was like this. And there was a reason that Sony did this. And that is so that, and you guys that are thinking about this can probably already know what I'm going to say here. If you're using just a stereo AV cord like you'd use to plug your headphone plug into an amplifier which only has left and right audio, guess what? You get audio, you get video, and then this entire piece here, this would all be ground. And you'd get audio and video. And the Sony cameras were smart enough that if it detected a short between the right audio and ground, it actually switched the audio to mono on this, the tip. So you had tip, left audio, ring one, video, ring two, ground, and the barrel that no normally people think of as ground as the right audio. That is how a Sony is wired. Let's check this other one out and see how it's wired. Now remember, the tip should be going to the white. So does tip go to, to the right? No, it does not. Maybe the cable's broken. Let's just see what goes to the, the tip, if anything. Could it be the red one? And it is indeed the red one. Where does the yellow one go? The yellow one is probably going to the second contact. I guarantee it is because I saw video. And I'm going to guess that the white tip is going to this ground ring. And the shield is going to... That is why this cable does not work. This is a conventional cable that most other manufacturers put out. And they don't work. You could make this one work by grounding the one that's going to 
this pin. So the one that was going to the middle pin down, I think was uh, the white one here, was going to here. So if I put a shorting connector on here, going to find something to short it with, I can just do it with a jumper. Okay, if I put a short on the white connector, like that, and then I plug in the red and the white to my TV, to the audio and video input and just ignore one of them, I should get a picture without distortion. There you go. And that's because I shorted the two end terminals. So this particular cable that I'm dealing with right now that was brought in with the camera, which there's nothing wrong with the camera as far as the guy that owns it thought it was the the, uh, the AV output. But this particular cable, if I draw this one out, okay, and we've got, okay, video is still going to this one, okay, audio, and this one here would be the other audio. and ground. Now you see the difference between the two. Right? Audio, this is going to be left audio, I'm sure. Actually, no, this one actually is right audio because it's the red one, so it's right audio. And this one is left audio, the way that they've wired it, because the white one is normally left. So they've got red, yellow, uh, white, and ground. Whereas Sony has red, ground, uh, yellow and white. That's the difference between these two cables, but you can make one of these cables work If you've got one of these three-way cables, you can make it work by just shorting the one that's not needed to put these two together Another way to do it is with a stereo cable. So let me grab a stereo cable. This one's a stereo cable Unfortunately, this cable they've reversed the left and right as we look at the tip The tip is normally the white in this case. It's the red So if I plug the white one into the video and the red one into the audio. When I plug it into the camera, I will have video and sound, but of course, I won't get stereo sound. I only get monaural sound. And there it is, all the cameras in demo mode, that's why it's doing all this stuff. Turn it back on, get rid of that, right? So, so that's, that's the issue here. So the, the fellow that owns this is going to have to either just jumper the, the white together to uh, get video out of this cable or find the appropriate Sony cable and getting a proper Sony cable for this these days is like winning the lottery because they just I, I haven't seen one in a long time when these were current when these were available they weren't cheap because it was a proprietary Sony and you know that it's proprietary with Sony because it's yellow, you see? Sony always did things like that. If they had a yellow jack on a piece of equipment, it always meant that it was a special cable and you needed to use Sony's cable. And that little short one that I just showed you a few minutes ago, to buy that little cable, at the time, this is going back to the 1990s when these cameras were around, at the time that little cable was around $40 and there was a longer one that was like this that was also about the same price because I've got one. I've got a, I've got a three foot cable like this with, uh, it looks similar to this, but I think it's got a, I'll go find it. It's got a, it's got a right angle plug on it. I'll grab it and show you, show you the, the cable itself. This one is the Sony cable. I was one time thinking it had, it actually had yellow uh, on here, but it that's, actually doesn't, it's black. I just haven't looked at this one for a while, but this is the Sony cable. You can see the difference in the connector on the end. It doesn't have this big uh, ferrite, ferrite bead for one, but it does uh, It does have a right angle connector so that when people were plugging their camera in and they had it sitting on top of the TV, for example, it didn't have this big connector sticking out to get tripped over and, and cause damage. So now that we've got that dilemma solved, I'm going to take this back in the house because I don't want to get my cable mixed up with somebody else's. I thought on here it said Sony somewhere too. I'm pretty sure it was molded onto the case. Maybe it's the other one. Maybe it's the short one that said Sony. But anyway, this one was the proper Sony cable. 
and uh, when you measure it with a meter you'll find that the ground is on that second that second conductor not the far one and it was only available from Sony I th I've said that enough but I get asked this question all the time where can you buy a Sony cable well you can't you can make one up though buy the end and make your own the other complaint on this camera of course is the power switch seems to have a problem or so he says so let's check out the switch when I put it into um, VCR mode apparently it's not working properly and it's not turning on ah, I see so let's take the switch apart and uh, see whether we can get that part working because that's the biggest that's the biggest problem is that it, it's you can hear it beeping and beeping it's a problem with the switch so let's pull the camera apart and see what's wrong with the switch I'm also going to do the um, the standard problems that happen on these, even though it does, hasn't happened yet. The edge connectors cause a lot of problems on these cameras, and that's one of the major problems with causing intermittent problems is these edge connectors. We've gone through that before on other ones. I'm going to make sure that that's not going to cause a problem on this one, as it is one that's in for service. As you can see, I'm using the, the new screwdriver I got with my battery replacement kit for my cell phone just because it just happens to be the right size and it was the closest screwdriver that I grabbed. And it fits the camcorder screws perfect. So why not use it? Take out the wide angle adapter. Wonderful. Brutal plastic. That's what happens when you get this old stuff. Is that, uh, especially if it's been sitting around for a long time, is that the, the plastic starts to get brittle and, well, you have things like that happen. Remove all the arrow mark screws. That's all of them. And then the unit should just pop apart. One more here. And then the yellow unit will just pop apart like that. Unplug the, the board. Do that board. This is the memory stick holder. This one you could put a memory stick in to store photos. Okay, the connectors I'm interested in obviously are these ones along the top here. These ones give us the most amount of problem on these cameras. I also want to get to the switch, which is on the right side. I got to remove this other screw here to get to the switch. And we'll see if it's the switch itself that's damaged.
there we go, stuck. <clears throat> it was stuck. So this is the switch I need to get to inside here. Let me get it some cleaner into that switch. See if it will work. Otherwise, I'm going to have to try to source one. I, I think I have one kicking around here somewhere too in another machine, another camera that I gutted the chassis out of. I think it uses the same switch as this one. So peel off the tape. I love this stuff. I tape these connectors down. Sometimes it's just easier to remove the circuit board and then to undo the connector. Just pull the board out, complete with the switch on there. Now I can get to the switch itself and see if we can make this switch work. And I think it's all one sealed unit, so I don't know if we're going to have much luck. But I may have uh, another switch assembly from another camera that I might be able to swap out onto this. Because this was normally sold as one complete assembly. It has the zoom control on it as well and the photo button. But whether I can get in here with some cleaner or not, that's the, the question. I might be able to get some cleaner into the switch. So we're going to try to clean this switch some neutral even though I do have another switch block control here I don't really want to sell it because well I have um, three camcorders at least three that use this well two for sure I have two uh, DCR TRV 240s which use the same switch block which I use as part of my archiving business so obviously I don't want to sell my spare switch that I have and if I were to sell the spare switch that I have it would be expensive because I might need it myself and uh, if I've got a spare I don't want to get rid of it on equipment that I have that I still use so let's just try getting some cleaner into the switch here and see whether I can clean the switch and make it work so that it stays on after all it does switch on it just is intermittent. So if I can clean up the contacts in there and make it stay on, then this one's probably okay. The other thing I'm going to do on this one, of course, is do the connectors here on top of the, the camera because these always go bad on these ones. You have to reseat these four connectors. Or you get all kinds of weird intermittent problems so just just take them out and put them back in it's just enough to break any of the uh, oxidation that forms on the pins just carefully remove and not damage them all these ones are are kind of fun to get out so sometimes it makes it a little easier if you just put a screwdriver behind it just to help you pull them out so you can do that without damaging the uh, actual ribbon itself. One more down here to do. Okay, I'll reassemble the camera and we'll check that switch make sure that it's working. So 
So we'll start by reattaching the circuit board. This, is, this switch here is to determine whether the cassette is open or closed. So when the compartment opens up, it activates. This is the, the, the tray here. I guess you won't see it now that it's closed, but when I open this up, you see? That's what activates that switch to tell the unit to eject the tape. So if you've got a machine that you open and it won't eject, that's the switch there that causes that problem. We open it up and it won't eject. That switch is bad. And it can be cleaned as well. You can spray some cleaner in here and just activate it multiple times. Battery compartment will slip back in. screw back in that holds the battery compartment in place. I should be able to test this. I think at this point I can turn this on and uh, it should uh, might not have a beeper on there because I think the beeper is on the other side but uh, I should be able to power it up without having to put everything all back together. I just won't have any indication that it's powered up. We'll just connect the, the side cover on. Just so that the beeper and stuff works. Now I can power it up. We'll see how that switches now. It's on. Not making a bunch of noise anymore. It is on now. As you can see. And now it's off. back on. Switch is solid now. So that's good. And to camera mode. There's the camera. Okay, let's put this one back together. I'm 
I'm sure it's working okay. I will test it before putting all the screws. I'm just going to put the side cover on first. Oh, got to put the got to put the the other little board back in here first before putting the rest of it back together. Obviously, not that anybody's going to use this anymore. Um, the the digital camera on this thing was absolutely disgusting. I believe the pictures on this was 640 by 480 is what the images were that it took. I should uh, plug my memory stick in here just to show you guys how bad it is. I've got a memory stick for one of these. I think they came with a ridiculously small memory stick. It was like, I think it was 4 megs. 4 megabytes, if you can believe that. And I have one that, that's that size. Of course, you could put a bigger one on there as well. I think I've got a, I've got a four megabyte and a sixteen megabyte memory stick, full size memory stick like these ones used. It was, uh, as I say, it was, it was an absolute joke. Why they bothered doing it is anyone's guess, because it wasn't high quality by any stretch of the imagination. It was about as pathetic quality as you're ever going to find off of any anything that calls itself a digital camera. It was kind of like an afterthought that, uh, that Sony had. Yeah, let's just make this thing take still photos. But I guess of the era, I mean, a lot of the digital cameras back then were only a couple megapixels anyway. Right? We didn't have uh, cameras that were you know, 12 or 14 or 16 megapixels. Back then, they were all uh, pretty low resolution. Uh, when this camera was out, what's the year on this one? This was actually quite late in the digital eight. So there, I mean, we had megapixel cameras, and then we probably had cameras that were in the six to uh, ten megapixel range for stills. But uh, video cameras lag behind on that. The, the first really good camcorder that did really good stills was the one that I have. I have a it's an H. It's called an HC three. Um, I've shown it, the little HC3 Mini DV. It's a high definition camera, but it has a four megapixel sensor, so it actually shot four megapixel stills, which is still pretty low, but it was better than what the others did, and it would store them on a memory stick. Okay, let's plug this thing in and make sure that it works, and then I'll put the rest of it back together. So we'll turn it on to the VCR. And I'll plug it into my TV using his cord with the uh, the white shorted together so that it gives me a picture. We'll find out if this one plays back analog tapes. I think it does. This is a high eight or digital eight or sorry regular eight tape. There we go. It's playing. So that problem solved. We got this one running. The power switch is now good. As you can see, no wonky power switch, and the video out problem was just wrong cable. So I can now put this one back together and be satisfied that this one's going to work. Oh, wait a minute, can't even use that cable out here, I'm buzzing. Oh, that's just because my ground wasn't any good here. See if I remove that ground? I'm just grounding it out, my connection wasn't good there, that's why I was buzzing a bit. So, he needs the right cable, or um, other option of course would be to use FireWire, which he doesn't have a FireWire input on his computer. Although I know that you can get USB to FireWire adapters that will convert FireWire over to USB. But an AV cable, just a regular, ordinary stereo type cable like this will do the job if I 
plug that one in. I think it was the white went to video on this one, but usually it's the other way around. And if I plug this one in, as you'll see, it will work just fine. But no stereo sound, just monaural sound. But for most people, that's probably all they need is they, oh, they just want to get their tapes transferred. And if you can't get the original Sony cable, you're going to have to do it with mono sound. There's not really any other way around it. Sony used a proprietary connector for a reason to force you to buy their connector or their power, their uh, connecting cable. So I'll reassemble the rest of the camera. It's fun to get these connectors back together because they're not very long. So I say continue to assemble the camera. You'll notice that I did put the piece in that broke off when I pulled it apart so I glue that piece back in that broke off from the plastic that's getting really brittle on this camera and all the ones of this era. That's what happens with plastic when it gets old, it gets brittle. There's not much you can do about that. And I say I didn't even put any uh, any force on it to open it up, just the normal pulling on this, but there's a tab in here that locks it in place. And just, the, uh, just the tab releasing uh, broke the plastic. Got a couple more screws to hold the front cover on. And then the unit will be back together. Okay, I've got the camera back together. We're going to give it a final test. I'm going to do a playback and then a record test. So here's a millimeter tape to play back okay that one plays okay let's uh, try making a recording this being a digital 8 camera we'll record in digital 8 format all right we're recording with the super wide angle lens on here recording in a digital this is how much wider this the wide angle adapter made the picture that's why so many people put them on because you see you made it that much wider and as long as you got one that was designed you didn't get so much much darkening in the corners I can see a little bit of darkening in the corner down here on the on the uh, screen but it doesn't show up on the Doesn't really show up much of the plasma because I guess it's overscanned a bit. Anyway. Check the night shot switch, which works. Alright, that should be enough recording. We'll play this back. I can kill the, the mute on my TV. Watch the head clog up on this tape, right? Rewinding the tape back. Okay, it was probably a bit of a... <clears throat> there was some analog stuff recorded on here, so it'll switch. I'm sure to analog for a second and then switch back. Which it does. And that's it go to digital which it just did switching back to digital super wide angle there we go <clears throat> here. recording in the digital this is how much wider this wide angle adapter made the picture that's why so many people put them on because you see it made it that much wider
and as long as you got one that was designed, you didn't get so much of, much darkening in the corners. I can see a little bit of darkening in the corner down here on the on the uh, screen. It doesn't show up on the doesn't really show up much on the plasma because I guess it's overscanned a bit. Anyway. Shot switch, which works. All right, that should be enough recording. So that's how you go about cleaning the switch on one of these. You got to really disassemble the entire camera to get at the switch. You don't want to just start spraying cleaner in here because you'll get it all over the mechanism. So you really do have to take it all apart, like I did, to get to it to clean it up. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. I just had to show this. This was the tape that was in there. Ouch! Ow! Ouch, ouch, ouch. I can feel that. Ouch.